My name is Akiva Goldman. I'm the director and founder of Goldman and Associates. Our firm has a primary focus on family law issues here in Michigan, and today we're continuing our video series designed to educate and inform the public, so please subscribe to our channel. Divorce in and of itself, almost by definition, is a high-stress situation. Assuming that the parties are just like a standard divorce where they're married, it didn't work out, they have a couple of kids, they have things to divide, there's questions of assets and liabilities, very, very stressful. First of all, it's stressful to go through the process in the first place. Second of all, it's stressful to have courtrooms and judges and lawyers in your life. It's very unpleasant to have to take your whole life and put it out there before everybody else. Very, very stressful. Are there ways you can cut down on the stress? I think there are. Let me make a couple suggestions to you. Number one, choose your battles wisely. Battles have stress. The more battles you have, the more stress there is. But not every disagreement has to be a battle. Not every single thing has to be a bone of contention. You don't have to die on every single battlefield. You don't have to take up arms every time you disagree on something. If there's two TV sets in the house, you take one, the other side will take one. You don't have to fight over which one is better because guess what? If the court gets involved, they'll sell it all at a garage sale and you'll get nothing out of it. So you have to pick your battles wisely. If it's something about the health and welfare of the children, it's very important. That's something that you have to have your position, you have to be heard on that. That's not, not something to just say, oh, well, forget it, I'll eat that. No. When it comes to the kids, you don't want to eat particularly important things. I'm not talking about whether the pickup is at 6 o'clock or at 6.15. That's a detail. I'm talking about things that go to the health and safety of the child. Those are important things, and you don't want to compromise on those things, and everybody gets that. But there are things that are going to come up in the divorce, like how do we divide the personal property, and who gets the good couch, and who gets the worn couch. Those are really things that you should table, that you should be flexible on, that you should not stress out on. You don't need that battle in the face of other way more important battles. Another item of stress is the cost. Part of the problem and having run this firm for over 30 years, I can tell you, my experience, part of the problem that causes stress is the fact that people feel they have to assert their position on certain things. But the cost, the attorney fees, the court costs, all of that is very, very considerable. So on the one hand, they want to fight for what they believe is important to them. On the other hand, you know, it's not like they have a tree in the backyard and they shake it, money goes down, they give it to their lawyer. That's not how it works. There are practical financial realities associated with what you're fighting about. And that's a real problem. So one of the things that you can do to alleviate that stress, because I know it's expensive, but one of the things you could do is have a frank discussion with your lawyer about things that you might do to keep the cost down. For example, every case has legwork. Every case involves perhaps pulling a file from another office, pulling something out of archives. If there's domestic violence, it could be involve getting police reports from that police station and from this police station. Now, you can hire your lawyer to do that. And you can say, why should I run around and get that stuff? I paid for a lawyer, let him get it. Well, the reason why is because the money that you paid your lawyer, I presume you want, for him to do research, write briefs, argue motions, have contested hearings, cross-examine witnesses at trial. That's what you want your money to go for. Do you really want it to go for things that you could do? You want it to go for things that you can't do, but things that you can do, you should do, or at least offer to do. Tell your lawyer, look, if you need to pick up a police report, I'll go and down to the police station and I'll wait online for two hours until they pull this old file and give it to me. If I do it that way, I've lost my time. If you do it, I've lost eight, nine hundred dollars. So you want to alleviate the stress associated with the finances? Offer to do some legwork. Number one. Number two, be judicious about your communication. That's something that really, really ratchets up the cost because lawyers are duty bound by their ethics and by their malpractice carriers to Take every single communication to respond to the calls, to respond to the emails, to respond to letters or messages. They're obligated to do that. When you call up and the lawyer picks up the phone, at that point you're paying for the call. So if it's something substantive that you have to discuss with the lawyer, of course, do it. That's the crux of the relationship of, is communication. But if you just want to call to, to say well, the bad thing that your husband did today, 
I gotta tell you, calling your lawyer for that is a very, very expensive luxury. Call your mother, call your brother, call a relative, go to a club, talk to the bartender about it, talk to a therapist about it. That's fine. Go to church, talk to a rabbi or a priest. You wanna talk to your lawyer about it, you're gonna pay lawyer rates for that. Here's the key. When you pick up the phone to make that call, ask yourself, at some later point in time, am I going to resent having to pay a bill for this call? If the answer is yes, put the phone down. Don't make the call. Take away some of the financial stresses associated with your litigation by limiting your communication with your lawyer to what's crucial. Your lawyer is only going to call you when it's crucial. Don't forget to be in court tomorrow. Bring the deed with you. Dress appropriately for court so you don't make a bad impression. These are the things that your lawyer has to tell you. Lawyers are expert communicators. They're going to know what to tell you. They are very rarely going to call you to chit chat. When your lawyer is calling you, it's going to be important. It's going to be about your case. But you, likewise, have to be judicious about that communication. And I think that can help relieve the stress or two. If you have any questions about your case, reach out and we'll be glad to help you out.